Okay. We got our microphones on. Everything's going. Rock and roll. Okay. Let's do this here. Don't tap. Boom. Okay. <laughs> I settle in onto the floor for my first floor based live stream. My name is Michael Markowski and I'm going to be showing you how to draw today. And I'm coming to you live from my childhood home in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. In uh, where we're, where I'm sitting right now is where I spent many, many times uh, sitting on the carpet, drawing, learning how to draw just like you are, making movies with my friends. And so it's really exciting for me to be here and uh, in this, in this uh, place that is a lot of meaning for me. And uh, right behind me, uh, or right, well, actually right behind me, there's, I guess you can't see them, there's uh, some of these Robert Taylor aviation paintings that my dad had that I was surrounded with when I was growing up and um, kind of inspired me to do that project where I went in a fighter plane and made artwork in, the, in a CF-18 Hornet with the Royal Canadian Air Force a few years ago. And um, so there's a lot of memories in this place, which is um, kind of fitting that today we're going to learn how to draw self-portraits. So we are going to learn how to draw ourselves. And I, just right off the top, I totally acknowledge the fears that people may have about doing what we're about to do. Drawing your self-portrait is stressful for people, most people, I would say, even myself. Like today, I'm, I feel a little bit more anxious than I normally do before doing a show. And part of that is doing this with all of the setup and trying to get all that organized. But a large part of it is the the pressure that I feel doing this in front of uh, in front of everybody on the web live um, and for all to see so that's a little bit stressful but um, uh, I think often what happens when we're drawing ourselves is that we sometimes confuse the drawing with us and sometimes people are doing a drawing of themselves or, or of anybody or of anything. And if it's not turning out exactly the way they want, they get stressed out. And then coupled with that, when we're drawing our self-portrait, sometimes people feel like, well, maybe this is revealing something about me that I don't want the world to know. Or, you know, I mean, there's a lot wrapped into the, the history of the self-portrait. Um, and to be quite honest, this, the whole self-portrait as a as a, um, I was going to say medium, but a, a genre of art is relatively new. I mean, artists have been kind of sneaking their portraits into artwork. There's self-portraits of Michelangelo in The Last Judgment um, mural in the Vatican, um, where I'm trying to think of some other very famous ones. Um, Velasquez uh, did a number, uh, Rembrandt, I mean, so, well, I mean, th th those are artists who snuck their pictures into the self-portrait, or into other paintings of other people, um, kings and queens and religious scenes, etc. And it wasn't until kind of maybe the 1850s when artists actually just started making paintings, singular paintings, and drawings just of themselves. So when we're talking about the scope of human history of being like, you know, art being around for, you know, a couple hundred thousand years, and we're really just doing something that is relatively new. Anyway, uh, I can talk about that while I'm drawing. So let's get our materials out here. Today, I'm going to be using, here, let me get my auto screen out here. Um, so today, oh, this, this camera above here is going to be causing me a little bit of, uh, a grief throughout, so maybe I might even slide this back here. Um, part of the thing of making artwork 
well, this is not going to go too far back, of doing something like this while you're traveling is you don't, you forget little things like these clamps that hold the camera. So this camera is kind of slowly kind of swinging. So more and more you're going to see the top of my head. And I'm going to have to adjust it a few times throughout. Anyway, so today um, I would still recommend you use your HB pencil to start. Um, and then if you want to get into the 2B, 4B, 8B pencils as you go, that would work. Um, as you know, if this is the first time, well, if this is the first time you're seeing me, hello, welcome. Um, what I often do is I'm often, just for your sake, draw in uh, a few different colors, like a blue and a red, so that you can see the, f the different steps in my drawing very clearly. Uh, but if you want to use red and green or purple and orange, you want to try to draw your own face and your skin tones and hair tones, you can do that, though I would suggest you just try drawing in black and white for today's episode. Or what I often tell little kids, oh, some tea, ooh, look at this. Service my wife, oh, thank you. Uh, I, tea is really important for, uh, for drawing. Um, so I'll adjust this camera here in a moment. Um, so, uh, what I often suggest to little kids, cause I've taught, um, children, kindergarten children, uh, elementary, high school, adults, I teach this at university, uh, where I teach at, um, senior citizens. I've taught people pretty much from the age of three to, I don't know how old the oldest person, maybe 90, um, how to do all this. So what I often tell, especially little kids, is if you want to use color, then you cannot use the right colors. You have to use, uh, let's say your hair's blonde. Well, you can use anything but a yellow or a brown. You've got to use green or purple or orange or whatever it is, just so that you're not fixated on trying to get the colors right when we're still learning how to draw, right? Okay, so, um, this darn thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly adjust this because you're probably gonna wanna see more than just my, uh, my lap as we go here. Oh, that's gonna be problematic. Hmm, okay. So, it's already creeping down. <laughs> well, let me see how far I can pull this whole rig back here. And then I can push this back once it's there. Okay. So here's my sketchbook. It's a blank page. Now, in the past, for the past, what, this is episode 23 of what will eventually be about a 40 episode series on how to draw. Usually what we do is we spend the first 20 minutes or so doing a warm-up drawing. And so today, because it's maybe a little bit more involved, we're going to kind of incorporate the warm-up drawing into our finished drawing. Um, so we've got our sketchbook ready and let's grab a pencil. And then most importantly, we need either a mirror or a phone to take a selfie picture of. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm probably gonna use a mirror for today's exercise. The, the, what, what is the difference between taking a picture on your phone or a camera and putting it on your computer uh, or using a mirror? Well, good question. The, the advantage a taking a selfie or any kind of photograph of yourself and working from the photograph of is, is it's gonna stay consistent. Look at this, my hand flying around here is probably super distracting. <laughs> so if I take, well, let's just do, let's just compare this a little bit here. So I'm gonna take a photo of myself. Okay, and I hear my family watching this video upstairs. Maybe if they could close the door up there so I don't get any echo, that would be great. Um, and uh, the, so the difference between this is that this photo is going to stay still and consistent, right? Because that angle is not going to change. 
Every time I look at the picture, it's always going to be exactly the same, right? So I've got a, a photograph on my phone, right? So no matter which angle, no matter how I'm looking at it, it's always going to be exactly how it is right there. Versus if I'm holding my mirror, and that, this is one side's the zoom side. I'm going to use the zoomed out side. Where so I have my mirror, and let's say I've got a mirror like this where I'm holding it in my hand, it's going to move a little bit, and my head is going to move a little bit, right? And that's, that's totally fine. It just means that there might be a little bit of distortion that takes place so that <laughs> um, you may not be always drawing your eyes in the exact same angle. Does that make sense? I know it sounds kind of straightforward, but it can account for some kind of problems that may arise. So here's one version of a mirror that I can just sort of, you can prop up, you know, you just find a few things that you can kind of jimmy your mirror in there so it doesn't move. Or you can have a mirror like this that goes up and down. Either way, work really well. Okay, but I'm going to try to use my mirror, I think, to do this, just because that might be how a lot of people are working. Oh, and there's my daughter, uh, or our daughter, in the, uh, the bedroom, just waking up from her nap. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do, and this is, we're going to re repeat a number of the lessons from the first, uh, I think it was about five or six episodes ago, where we learned how to draw faces, so we're going to apply all that today. So, we're going to draw a oval shape here on the page. And I'm going to use my pink to simulate this is the first layer. Oh, I love you guys. Can I just see her for just one second? I'm sure people won't mind. Just a real quick little visit with dad. Okay, this is <laughs> yeah. Poor little girl just being woken up and thrust in front of a camera in front of people watching. Hey, I'm going to draw a picture of myself today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just waking up. I'm tired. Tired, Daddy. Okay. Say hi to everybody. Can you say hi? Hi. Can you say hi? Me? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. She's like, why would I wave at that black thing over there? It's a black shape that doesn't do anything. There you go. Good girl. Okay. So we'll get to work. Okay. Thank you for indulging me. That's my daughter, or our daughter, Edie Lowe. I keep saying my daughter, but I'm just a very proud dad. Okay. So, um, where's my view from overhead here? So, I've got... I'm going to keep on pulling this back here. So, we'll start with this... Uh, um, circle. I've kind of made it a little bit more of an egg shape or avocado shape, if you remember the ear session from a few days ago. Um, everybody's face is a different shape, but at this stage, I wouldn't try to try to get the jaw or the width of the head or anything like that in place. I would just start with uh, just your plain oval. Okay. So now we're going to draw a line straight up and down to divide the left and right sides of the face. And then from here, we're going to try to divide the face in half with the horizontal line. You don't need a ruler for this. It doesn't have to be perfect. But so you just kind of eyeball it and say, okay, well, that's pretty good for... And so th again, this pink pencil is supposed to denote your sketching line. So you would draw this much lighter than I'm drawing it right now, but I want it, you to be able to see it, so I'm drawing maybe a little bit darker than, than I would normally. Okay, so the next thing, if you remember, so is to draw where the eyes are. So this is our eye line, right? So we're going to divide the face into half, or from half into quarter. We're going to put a little dot there. That's going to be the pupil of one eye, the little black dot in the middle of your eye. And we're going to do this again. Right? I'm not even looking in the mirror yet. We're just getting the structure of the face down. Next thing we're going to do is divide from the eye line down to the chin in half. I'm going to put a little, little line here. So that's going to be where the tip of the nose is. Kind of 
right just below the nose usually, kind of, or not below the nose, but the bottom part of the nose. And well, if, if you haven't watched the nose episode, I've did a whole almost two hour long episode talking about how to draw noses. So you, you can watch that full episode. Um, that was a couple ep episodes ago. And then we're gonna draw the mouth, which is halfway between the nose and the chin. And so this line is right here. Okay. So the next step we're going to do is identify where the hairline is, and that's usually be halfway between the eyes and the top of the head. We're going to put this. And so the hairline is where your hair starts growing, where your forehead meets your hair, right? And when we, last class, we talked about drawing hair, and we saw that there were times where that hairline might come up. Usually it doesn't go further down um, so it's usually a little bit higher up, but uh, one thing I often see, when I, especially when I'm teaching little kids, is that they often start drawing their hair right up top here, and they leave this part blank. They a lot of people imagine their forehead being really big, so you often have this these weird portraits where it looks like almost somebody shaved, the, you know, this front part of the hair right off. So we're gonna try to avoid. Uh, having a, uh, an odd haircut for you today. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the ears in, and the ears fall halfway or in between the the eyes, so this would be the top of your ears. You should put a little semicircle there, and then we're down to the nose. So I'm just going to put these little sausage shapes on the on the side of the head like that. Okay, so I'm not even, again, I'm not concerned about the shape of the face or anything like that. We're going to get to that. That'll actually, the shape of the face, the way that I draw faces, anyway, will be one of the last things we do. Okay, so now we've got the basic proportions and structure of the face in place. Now we've got to fill it up with our own facial features. Now, again, I strongly encourage you to draw your face. Today's all about drawing a self-portrait. You could, if you want, draw me, or you could, if you want, draw some person in a magazine or a photo that you found online. And you're, again, we're drawing a person straight on, so it's, it's important to avoid drawing a three-quarter, which is around this, this point of view, or from the side. Those are two classes that are coming up over the next uh, week. But So let's try to find a picture straight on like that. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up my mirror because we're going to try to put our facial features onto this grid. So um, well, the good thing about a mirror like this is I can kind of put it in place and kind of leave it there and uh, I don't have to be adjusting it, you know, constantly, right? And I can kind of, that way I can kind of maintain the same sort of angle of view that I would if I took a, a photograph. Okay, so I personally like starting at the eyes because I feel like if I can nail the eyes, then the drawing is smooth sailing from there. So let's say I'm going to start, just because I'm right-handed here, I'm going to start with my left hand so that I'm going to kind of slowly work my way over here and I'm not smudging the right eye. But again, there's no right or wrong way, you know, steps to do this in. So once you learn this, you can mix and match them, whatever works best for you. So I'm going to start drawing the the pupil of my eye. All right, so I'm going to start with, that's the pupil, the part that expands and contracts when it gets lighter or darker. And then this next line that I'm drawing, and notice I'm still using, I'm still sketching. So I'm still using my pink pencil to denote the first few lines on the page here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the top eyelid. I'm going to try to draw this top eyelid, All right? So, and actually, you know, I could go back. We talked about your eyeball in here, and it might be helpful just to very lightly, I'll just draw this in a little bit darker so that you can see where the eyeball, let's say here would be the other iris and eyeball. How big are these eyeballs? Well, um, technically, you should be able to fit 
a f at least one eyeball in between here. I've seen other people talk about you should be able to fit two eyeballs in in between the eyes. Either way, you want to have at least one eyeball in between your eyes. Um, if if there's less than an eye eyeball sp a space in between your eyes, your eyes are going to look way too close together. It's going to look a little strange. I always think the 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 farther your eyes are apart is it pretty much works. Like you can make put these eyes very far apart, and your drawing is still going to look believable or normal. It's when those eyes get too close together that they start looking strange. Even when you're coming up with a little cartoon character or something, right? Okay, so I've these, my eyelid, remember, is going to start right about right in front here, and it's going to cut over, It's in my case, the way that I'm looking in the mirror is it's touching the top, and then it's going to come down, right? So this is the shape of the top of my eyelid. And then now I want to draw the bottom eyelid. And again, it's touching and coming up and with your so it's important to spend some time just kind of getting this shape I know it looks you're like well this looks like everybody's eye no not really this is and you're, you're gonna see this eyelid is gonna be a little bit different than this eyelid on the other side so noticing those little tiny differences is really important because that's what's going to make the drawing look like you and not like some generic person. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm going to kind of quickly try to get the same um, shape. So now I have a fold on this eyelid kind of going down here. And I, I we talked about this when we were talking about drawing, but you pretty much will never find like in if we should not have any white space around like your eyelids should be connecting to your iris basically should be touching your um because if if not that means your eyes are look how wide like i really i'm straining here and make even myself a bit of a headache in order to get my eyes wide enough so that i can see a little bit of a white of my eyeball around right? So, and even then, drawing your self-portraits is a bit of an intense activity. So your eyes are probably wider or more widely open than they normally would be because you're kind of like intensely looking in the mirror. I often find when people draw their self-portrait, they look really kind of intense because you're doing, you're, there's a lot of focus going in your drawing. So people are kind of like, oh, this, I look kind of angry or something. Well, you're not angry, but you're just very focused in your drawing. Okay, so I'm going to keep on going here. I'm trying to get a few more. There's some, um, again, the other thing too is the shadows that might be coming down my face. You know, when I'm looking down here into the mirror, and you can kind of see it in the video camera, is now I have my eyebrows are casting uh, a light down onto my eyes. Do I want to capture that or not? Right, when I'm looking straight like this, my face is more evenly lit. So it's, it's it causes a different kind of a look, right? So what kind of look do you want to create? Okay. I feel like I'm okay with this eye so far. So I'm going to move on to the other eye. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to try to capture the shape of this eye. And this, my right eye is kind of seems to, you know, if I look into the mirror, it seems to kind of want to be a little bit more open than my left eye. That's just a quirk of my own body, right? So if I want to draw myself and make it look like myself, there's two things I can do is I could try to make myself look better and I can remove a few, smooth a few wrinkles away and I can, you know, make my face look a little more symmetrical. I can do all that, but the something that may happen if you try to do that is you may lose the likeness. You might, it might not look quite like you. It might kind of looks like me if I was, uh, you know, in, on a different planet or something, right? There's, oh, this, this camera sliding back here again. Oh, slide this all the way up to my belly and 
before I have to adjust it. Okay. So um, let's keep on going here. I'm going to draw the bottom eyelid. And your eyelids can, you know, they cross up and over, and then the, the bottom eyelid kind of is kind of hidden a little bit by your top eyelid just to keep the, the rain from getting in and the dust, right? So if you want, you can kind of curve those over. Again, this is still the underdrawing, the sketch, right? This You could say this is the warm-up drawing for our drawing. And then I'm going to try to get this eyelid here. All right, so there's a little bit of a difference in my drawing between my two eyelids here. Okay. I'm not going to get into all the details. Now what I want to do is I'm going to try to identify where my uh, eyebrow is. All right, so my usually your your eyeball, you know, there's your eye socket, right, is, you know, preventing your eyeball from falling right out. So it kind of is going to cross over. Some people have eyes that tend to kind of come forward and people who have eyes that are recessed a little bit. So you figure out in your drawing how your eye, your eyebrow looks and imagine where your eyeball would be. All right, now I'm just going to identify kind of how, I got big eyebrows. I got these big, you know, furry worms on the top of my, above my eyes, right? So I'm going to just kind of outline it like this. And then I'm going to go to the other eye and do the same thing, right? Maybe, you know, this, I'm just looking in the mirror, and it looks like this eyebrow, even when it's, mm, I was going to say, in a natural, relaxed state, it looked like it kind of came up a little bit and down. Okay. So I know if you're looking at this, this looks a little bit silly so far. Um, we're going to start filling it in with some more detail. So let's... We imagine, you know, our, let's kind of look for the, the corners of your eye, or right? So this would be kind of where your nose is going to, the bridge of your nose is going to be. All right, so we just kind of outline that. Now, again, the way that I'm drawing this, and this is an introductory class, so we're not getting into all the, how, like, really the super precise ways of drawing the face, but you may find that your eyes, that this part of your nose is a little wider than it appears. Like some people do have eyes that are closer together. This is just my, this is not only introductory class, but also part of my style. I kind of like having the eyes a little bit further away. So technically my eyes might be a little bit closer together, but I just, I, when in doubt, push the eyes apart, if that makes sense. Okay, so then I'm going to, I've got this kind of the, the bridge of the nose identified in there. And let's draw the, the, the tip of the nose. And again, this is why you may find if you take a photograph of yourself works well because your head is not moving up and down because that's going to really change how we draw the nose and your nostrils. So if I'm looking straight on in a photograph in a mirror, right, um, then I may see less of my nostrils than if I'm looking kind of down my nose or versus like this, I may not see any nostrils at all, right? So we want to try to be a little bit consistent as to how we're looking into the mirror. Now, when I look into the mirror, right, so this is kind of the tip of the nose, and then we have our nostrils, right? So we kind of do this V shape and it kind of looks like these little bows or something, right? Now that that's sort of the beginning of this. Now when I look into the mirror, I have a pretty big nose, right? We talked about a few different ways of doing this. So I in the previous classes, I talked about trying to draw like a, um, when I did the nose cl class, we talked about drawing like a bow tie, and we talked about drawing like a couple circles and doing it this way. There's plenty of different ways of drawing a nose. So I'm always a little bit hesitant to tell people how to do that because I think the noses show your personality as an artist, your own style 
if it's going to come through in any part of your drawing, it's going to be the nose. But there is this kind of a ball shape, and then your nostrils are kind of forming these kind of uh, smaller balls on either side. Okay, so take a moment to see if you can draw your nose in your nostrils. And I would also say, if you're following along right now and you're drawing yourself, I would try to keep up with me, right? So if you're still drawing your left, your left eye or your right eye or however it looks like on the camera, then I would try to move on and try to keep the same pace going. So you're not, you know, um, cause I'd like for you to get this drawing done by the end of the class, right? So we've got our, um, our nostrils and the tip of our nose drawn in here. And then I'm going to draw the outside of the nose. Now your nose is going to look different than mine, obviously, right? I, at this point, I'm not going to spend really much time shading or drawing my nose. I just want to identify where it is. I want to be able to, because later on when I come back with my blue pencil to do, as I'm kind of refining this drawing, I'm going to fix that. The, what's important about sketching it all out first is we could do this full, like I'm blabbing away and talking, but if we were actually drawing this, we might be at this stage within the first 10 minutes, right? Which would be great to be here drawing the lips. Cause if there's any kind of problem, we want to be able to solve that problem 10 minutes into the drawing and not two hours into the drawing where we realize, Oh no, the nose, I actually have a really long nose or a short nose and I'm going to move this up and now I'm going to move my lips and ah, I wish I had thought of that. I'd done this way long ago. So we don't want to have to make that level of commitment to the drawing that quickly. So now let's draw our lips and I would suggest you draw your mouth closed. You can give a little bit of a smile, but it's also going to change some other expressions. So I would just try to keep a fairly blank expression when we're learning how to draw a self portrait. So I'm identifying right here is this little, this, this my, where my top lip touches my bottom lip. So I got this little V shape. I have to move that camera shortly here. And then we're going to come up and down, up and down. And technically the, if your mouth is fully relaxed, we could draw a line all the way down here from the, our pupils and our mouth would be that width apart, right? Which can make for a really wide mouth. So I tend to kind of trim it down a little bit and make them a little bit smaller. It can be a little bit more flattering um, to, to a person. So you can see my, the way that I'm personally, my style, I'm trying, I, this is just a little bit bigger than my nose. Um, okay, so this is the line between my lips, and I've exaggerated it a little bit for this drawing and for you. Um, but again, it's always easier to tone down the wildness rather than to make it wilder. All right. Now I've got a mustache, but I can still, you know, I can still see where my top lip is, right? And your top lip, I often will start with by drawing. Um, this little divot at the top of the lips with a kind of a little U shape. And then it kind of comes up and down and up and down. Similarly, so that's the top lip. And then I'm going to identify now where my bottom lip um, ends, All right? So my bottom lip, I have, I have relatively bigger lips. Um, so I'm going to draw and often we have almost a little bit of a, um, a hill, you know, it's kind of curves rather than straight across your lip kind of comes down and then up a bit. Okay. So we want to be able to get to this place here. Um, Okay, so let's, I'm going to adjust this camera while you maybe catch up, depending on, on where you are in your drawing. I'm just going to push 
extract myself from this. Look how far that camera has slung down here. I'm just going to move this here. And then with my famous Houdini act. <laughs> okay. So. Now you get to see my legs and my cool pants. Hmm. I have a feeling that this is not going to want to stay up there like that. Hmm. Okay. Okie dokie. Well, I wonder can I make if it's really wants to do that. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just going to put a little bit of duct tape <laughs> on here. And let's see if I can help solve this. What can't be solved? with duct tape, hey, eh? right? Duct tape right on my camera. Okay. Well, now that's odd. Where's that crazy shadow coming from? Oh, this is from my mirror? Okay, let's get back to work here. Enough. Enough. Work must be done. Okay. So, I've got this face in place. Oh, look at that thing. Just slowly inching upward. Okay, so at this point, this t doesn't really look a lot like me, right? So, and you may be looking at your own drawing and being like, hmm, well, maybe my drawing looks a lot like Michael's drawing, but it certainly doesn't really look like me. What's going on? I guess I made a mistake. Like, I can't tell you how many times when I'm working with people, people get really discouraged at this point. So it's important to remember we're still in the sketch phase of our artwork, right? We're still working on the drawing. I talked about how important the hair is for your drawing. So that's what we're going to do next, because that is also going to really change your drawing. And it might really, because often people spend all this time, they're now racing eyes and noses, what's going on, getting all angry at themselves, when this isn't, there's no problem per se right here. It's because you know, maybe you're, if, unless you're bald, you're not used to seeing yourself without any hair whatsoever. And that can be really strange, right? So let's put some hair onto our, our figure here. So first thing is to find out where your hairline is. Like my hairline is actually quite low on my head, right? So it's, it's maybe not right here, but it is a little bit higher, right? So this is where this hair first comes out of my head. So identifying where that is, right? And then I'm looking in the mirror. So some people have a hairline that comes straight across. And then there's some people who have a hairline like mine that kind of comes like up a little bit, right? And then it kind of, my hairline, again, this is how my hair works, comes down and then right around my kind of, it almost mirrors my eyebrow here, parallels my eyebrows, comes out like that. Right, and then there's kind of a little sideburn action going on here. So that's this internal line, right, where my hair is on my, my head. Now we need to find out where your hair comes off of your head. And 
again, I'm not going to start drawing every hair yet. I just want to get the shape of my hair. So I'm looking in the mirror, and you know, I've got my hair kind of on both sides, kind of, kind of poofs up. If you have a, um, a part in your hair, maybe you have multiple parts in your hair, you want to find out where those are. Right? So I've got a part that is somewhere in here. Right, so I'm going to, wow, ah, that camera, I should have known. Okay, so here's this part, and then this right here, if this is my skull, is where the rest of my hair kind of pops up. Right, and now that's a little messy. So again, you could see, I'm not, I'm not worried. I've got all these little bits, pieces of hair. I'm not drawing all of that right now. I just want to identify where that is on the page so it can fit. Okay. So let's, we've got that. And already, do you see this drawing is cha has changed? Right? Like, when I looked at this, at my drawing down here, it didn't really look like me. Right? Now, obviously, I haven't drawn my mustache, and that's going to change things dramatically. But just putting this vague outline of my hair, at least the way when I'm looking at this drawing, I already start seeing myself in my picture a little bit. Now, maybe this is the very first time you've ever done this. Maybe maybe you're a new viewer to the show and you haven't you didn't watch my episode of how to draw noses and eyes and lips. So I would recommend doing a little bit of that, the, the, that watching those classes and following those lessons because that would help. But from here, I'm feeling pretty good. Now I'm starting to kind of, I see my the sh shape of my face a little bit more clear. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my chin and try to get a little bit of the shape of my face in here. Now, maybe when I was uh, 20 years old, my face had this type of a shape, right? This looks, my face looks very boyish right now, or a little bit more feminine, right? Whereas my, I've put on a little bit of weight since then, so my, and my cheeks have kind of filled out a little bit, and my jaw is maybe a little bit wider, right? So when I'm looking in the mirror, this is going to kind of widen out a little bit. In When I look at myself in here, so I'm going to widen my face out ever so slightly here. Okay, and then the kind of one of the last steps at this stage here is to draw my neck, right? And so it makes a difference between how you're looking into the mirror or in your picture. You know, ideal usually for most people, your neck. You know, if you take like one of your eyes and kind of down, your, your neck is going to kind of come down from the corners of your eyes. Women's necks tend to be a little bit thinner than, than your average man's neck. Um, if you put your neck way out, like right as if it's coming right out of your ears, you're going to look like a football player, like a front tackle or something, right? Versus if you make your neck really thin, you want to flatter yourself and look you know, like you want to get rid of any double chins or whatever. If you make your th your neck look too small, it's going to start looking like a character. Like, you know those pictures of the people do in Parisian, Parisian streets where there's a big head and then this tiny little body playing tennis or whatever, right? So if you get that neck too th thin, it's to flatter yourself, it starts to look a little bit like a caricature. So just want to kind of take a look. Where do you think your your uh, neck comes from. Another thing you can use is if you imagine extending your lips, your, your, the, your mouth line out to the edge of your face is where your neck can start. All right, so um, another, so one, a f let me see, a few things. I'm trying to think, uh, talking to my mom who's been doing these classes that she's brought up, one of which is the ears from the front, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I 
don't know if it was my mother or somebody else was saying like about symmetry. And that is a little bit tricky. It's like, you know, even when I'm looking at this, this here is maybe a little bit wider than this here. Getting your, your you know, as if there's a mirror right down the middle and getting it perfect, especially when we're drawing the shape of the face, is a little bit tricky. So that's why it's helpful to kind of do a little bit of sketching first to try to get it um, where you like. But I also want to stress is that very, very few people have fully symmetrical faces. If you've ever seen that exercise, there's where you can put, let's say, a mirror, like if you take a photograph of yourself and then you put a mirror in between your eyes and look at it, it can look really weird, right? So if you, or you can kind of do this in the mirror, all of a sudden, if you, t if you just took the, this side of your face and flipped it over there, it looks like you, but like some body snatcher thing where somebody's stolen your face and trying to assume, it's weird, it's really weird. Um, we're not going to draw, uh, you can draw the, sh your shoulders and your neck and everything. Again, that depends on how you're looking into the picture, right? Where your shoulders and where they're drawn tell us sort of about the angle of your head, right? So if I'm kind of looking down, my shoulders are going to appear to rise higher, higher up, right? So if I was doing a picture of somebody looking down, well then my shoulders might be actually coming up here, like right next to my ears, versus if I'm looking up, it uh, will do the exact opposite, right? So um, I've got my ears here. I'm not gonna, in, oh, so for the ears, we talked about, you know, th that avocado technique here. So it's a, we're basically kind of doing a little bit of a light outline for the helix of the ear. So kind of like this, it's almost like a little tiny inner ring. And then you want to look in the mirror at the shapes of, of each person's ear, right? Like one of the benefits, if you've struggled drawing ears, is that um, if you're drawing people straight on, there's often not a lot of ear to draw. Some people have ears that stick way out. Like we were drawing Barack Obama, or I was at the very end of last class. He's sort of famous for these big ears that come out. Right? And there's plenty of people whose ears almost become invisible looking straight on. Um, so, I, I, truthfully, when I'm drawing a person's portrait, I spend very little time, draw, and I'm drawing straight on, very little time drawing their, their ears. Because um, not only are they uh, details people the viewer doesn't look at very much. But if we spend a lot of time and a lot of detail in the ears, it's actually going to sort of take away, like it's sort of distracting when people look at the drawing. They start looking at other parts. So um, we don't need to spend too much time drawing our ears. We talked about that kind of a Y shape pattern. Well, we can barely see any of that when we're looking straight on in the mirror. Okay, so, and I guess at this point, the last thing that I'm going to do before I start kind of doing the finished part of my drawing, when, when I'm going to use a blue pencil for that, is just any other facial features that you feel are required for your face, right? And also maybe making any adjustments. If you feel like your nose looks too narrow or pointy or too wide, this would be the time to start doing that. So obviously I have this big mustache in the middle of my face. So I'm going to draw a little bit of that and kind of put that in here because that's you know, important. If, if I did a self portrait without it, people would find that a little bit odd, right? Although I lived most of my life without it. Um, okay. So I'm just, doing a little placeholder for that there. Um, you know, if you have kind of cheek, like eye bones or these creases around your, your nose and lips, that would be the time to kind of put any, kind of just identify those lines in here. Um, underneath the lips, you might often have a little bit, I have a little bit 
of a couple lines under here. Your chin, how big is that? How wide is that? Um, any freckles? You know, I've got a few little wrinkles on my forehead, and we'll do. You know, if you if you got moles or zits or cuts or scrapes, you do you want to include them or not? They can often be a real unique part of your face, and if you got rid of them, it could look a little bit strange. Um, other things too, people often, you know, I wear contact lenses, right? Or I have glasses too. I would save your glasses to this. This is where I would start drawing your glasses. If you want to draw yourself with your glasses, you know, often I have people in classes who will take their glasses off to draw their portrait, and then they kind of are looking at it and they're like it doesn't really look like me. Well. How often do you go around without your glasses? If you're somebody who wears your glasses from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed and you draw yourself portrait without your glasses on, you, you, it, this might look like a very unfamiliar person in this picture. So trying to draw your glasses would be at this stage. Now, glasses, I should actually do a whole episode on how to draw glasses. That's a, now that it occurs to me, because that is a little bit tricky for people. But the, the again, it really matters the angle you're looking into your mirror at your glasses. Because if you're looking kind of down, well, your part, your glasses, the top rim may, you know, really start getting close to your eyelids here. Versus if you're looking up, the bottom part of your frames might be on the, right? So it's, and also if you have like those Coke bottle glasses that make your eyes look bigger or smaller or whatever, that would be something to think about at this kind of stage. Like, do you want to shrink your eyes down or enlarge them? I would say no, even if that's the way they look in your, in the photographs, because it can, again, and this is a larger conversation just about drawing, but if you try to draw something, I'm just going to zip back here. I'm going to make some adjustments to this camera again. Um, uh, just because this is exactly what you see in the mirror doesn't mean that's exactly what you want to draw. Sometimes you have to draw things wrong in order to make it look right, if that makes sense. Okay. Oh, I got my legs have fallen asleep here. <laughs> um, I wonder if I can do this. Hmm. Uh, I think I've got to, I was going to see if I could do it on the couch, but I'm afraid not. Ah, there's always something. Okay, I don't think that's going to work. I think I'm going to draw on the couch with this camera from above. And I'm just going to have to quickly refocus it. Sliding. The best laid plans, as they say, right? Okay, I'm going to quickly move that camera up a little bit here. If you um, have a drawing that you're working on that you'd like me to see, I would love to see your progress. I would love to see the results of this project or 
other ones that you've done for this class, whether it's uh, the eyes or nose. I think they're, uh, Heidi sent me some on Instagram a while back, so I might uh, track those down. Let me see, can I do this? <sighs> okay. So, again, this very odd angle from above. So, let me change my angle of my mirror here. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing the rest of this drawing. I'm going to go over top of it with a darker pencil, which is what I would suggest you do, so that, because we've got all of, right now I've got a lot of guidelines. All of this pink is intended to be my sketching part of my drawing, and I want to transform it into a finished drawing. And I want to do this, finish this in about the next 20 minutes at most, right? I'd like to be able to to, to have a finished drawing in 20 minutes, uh, which, you know, may, depending on, on where you are in your drawing, ideally you're around the same, you've been kind of working at a little bit of a frantic pace, which might feel anxiety inducing, but the more you do that, then you start getting more comfortable, right? It's the same sort of thing. Like I have a, you know, um, a personal trainer who I work out with, you would know it uh, by looking at me, but um, definitely is always pushing me to, you know, like every time I feel like, oh, I've been, I can lift this certain amount of weight or stretch this, like, it's like, okay, well, let's put another five pounds on. It's like, oh God, right? I just I, let me feel the satisfaction, right? So that's a part of my job as a teacher is to keep pushing you, right? So. Now I'm going to go back to these eyes. All right, so I'm going to darken my pupils in here. And draw these in. Now I can't really see my eyelashes just because of kind of how far away I am from the picture, of, or not picture the the mirror. So I can zoom in on your in your uh, using your your phone or by getting your face a little bit closer. But even men have eyelashes, right? Often people will omit them from their drawings. So. Get that in. You want to be careful about putting too many lines um, underneath your eyes because that's going to age you pretty quickly, right? Um, so even though you know I've got a little bit of a you know kind of bags or these kind of darker areas under my eyes, I'm going to wait until the very end of my drawing and see if I need those in there for it to still look like me. Um, because again, even though they're there, by putting them in there, it could age me considerably. It could add like another 20 years onto this drawing and not only maybe make me look older, but make me look extremely tired, right? Um, so it's, a, it's kind of a personal thing as to what you want to include and what you want to edit out of your, of your drawing. Okay. Again, keep looking in the mirror. The mirror is where all the answers for your drawing exist, right? You know, people in class are like, well, my drawing doesn't really look like me. Well, it's like, well, how much time did you spend looking in the mirror? Were you really focused on your, um, on your drawing? Because that's usually what happens. When I'm in a classroom and I'm looking around, I can see people who are, who's, I'll just, I'll count, or sometimes I even use a timer, and I'll just be like, how long has it been since somebody looked up from their drawing and looked into the mirror? Okay. 
So I've got kind of the shape of these eyes in. And now I'm just going to tackle my eyebrows since I've kind of already outlined where they are on this page. I'm just going to... And you want to look at the, the, the direction these hairs are going in here. Because all those, the, the, the more you're careful about looking for those things, the more realistic or lifelike your drawing is ultimately going to be. You know, one of the, you know, again, it's like if you want to try to change your, your picture and kind of move things around, you know, to clean up your own eyebrows, you can do that. But then there's famous examples of people who didn't, like Frida Kahlo is very famous for her self-portraits with that unibrow look, right? Um, which sort of be, is her trademark. Like, if you want to dress up as Frida Kahlo for Halloween, you could literally just give yourself a unibrow and it's she, she's so closely identified with that right so she turned this thing in which for many people is is sort of seen as like a as a flaw and to pick all of your eyebrows out she, that's her her thing really right um so she turned that into her kind of greatest kind of uh you know unique facial feature Okay, now I'm going to start drawing, coming down here and drawing my nose. All right, I'm not going to start shading it really, although I'm just looking for the shape of my nose. My, my nose, I'm drawing my nose, not you're drawing your nose, right? Um, now, do I need to make my nose a little bigger? I think I'm okay with the way that it looks. Now I'm going to draw my nostril. And I think I need to change this shape a little bit. Just to kind of nail that. Okay. And I'm not even going to start shading anything just yet. I'm going to put the shading in kind of towards the end. Um, okay, I'm, you can see I'm getting a little bit of smudging happening with my hand sliding around on the page, so if that's a problem, you can just use a piece of plastic or another piece of paper to, um, to, to rest your hand on. I'm not, it doesn't bother me so much. I kind of like all that smudging stuff that happens in a drawing, but I can totally see why it would drive some people nuts. I, these lines here on the side of the mouth, you want to be very careful about, like you can even see when I put those in there, it all of a sudden kind of makes me look a little bit older, right? Even though they're there on my face, when I put it there, now my face all of a sudden starts to look like I'm 70, right? So I want to be careful about going too, too far down that road. Um, I'm going to draw my lips. So I had originally drawn maybe a little exaggerated shape of my lips, so I'm toning it down a little bit. You know, in, um, usually when you're drawing men's faces, you're sort of maybe de-emphasizing the thickness and the darkness of lips versus... On women, you're often emphasizing those qualities. Okay, so I'm just doing all the outlining here, going over the lines that I'm, I feel like I need. Okay. So I'm going to start drawing the shape of my face here.
And if you're if you're upset with the kind of symmetry of it, well, you can just keep on kind of expanding one out a little bit, and then that just becomes part of the shading as you shade your face, right? Okay. Again, I'm, I may even omit some of these kind of wrinkles in my forehead because they're already there in my underdrawing, and that might be enough um, for to kind of communicate that they're there. Okay, I'm going to draw my ear. Draw this ear. And because I'm going to sh do some shading on top of this drawing, I'm not, I don't want to focus too much on getting a, a bunch of details in here because those details might disappear in the darkness of my shading. Okay. Now I'm going to go up and start working on my hair again. Or I've got the shape here, but now I'm going to start drawing it in. You know, we're like, so my drawing is actually on quite an angle here, you know, technically it would be almost like this in relationship to the camera. So when you're seeing it, where is it, over here, you're seeing it on quite a slope, right? It's kind of, <laughs> it's quite dramatic, isn't it? It's how it changes the drawing. Um, almost am tempted to put something under here like that yeah maybe I'll actually that kind of works it's a little bit awkward for me while I'm working on my drawing but maybe that makes it a little bit easier for you to see at home here I'm gonna flip this around one more structure okay that's good I don't know why that didn't occur to me an hour ago or even the last couple episodes ago uh, let me just adjust this Okay, so now I'm looking in my hair, at my hair, and I want to try to get a few, actually I'm going to go back to my, my pink pencil, my sketch here, just to kind of get some of the shape of my own hair in here, some of these basic lines. I'm, I'm looking for where a hair begins, and I'm going to just sort of find, I'm just going to kind of follow it. Where do some of these hairs go and bend around? Everyone's got a different haircut, so I did encourage people at the end of last episode to, you know, take a look at your hair, maybe try drawing your hair, because the more you do that, the easier it's going to be to to do your own self-portrait. And then this is kind of coming up down here. Here. Okay. So now I'm going to take the plunge and start drawing a few hairs in here. And have a little bit of fun, like create a little bit of um very few people have like you don't you don't want your hair to look like it's a piece of plastic like a helmet that's been you know put onto your head so you want to add a little bit of give it some wavy qualities vary them have some hairs overlapping other hairs um this this can be a little bit more of a time-consuming thing, drawing hair. So I might just kind of speed mine up here because I'd like to, you know, try to get this done in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Obviously, you can spend as long as you want on your own drawing.
that's can you see that? I guess you can you can see the top of that on your screen. This back. So I, I haven't uh, been checking any of these my comments on this video. So let me see if I can pull up the. Uh, my YouTube here while this is happening to see if people have had any questions or concerns that I can answer while we're live here. Oh, okay, so here's a bunch of comments. Oh, nice to see you again, Palash. P P Palash, I think. I know I've, you've corrected me once, but I, c I can never... I'm very bad with names. Heidi's there. Peter's there. Yannick is there. Hi, Yannick. I haven't seen you in a little while. Um, oh, what kind of pencil? I think we talked about that earlier. Thanks, Peter, for answering the questions on, on my behalf. That's great. That's super helpful. You guys are are um, helping each other. Oh, Peter says he's been trying an 8B pencil for really dark sections. It's so much better on your hand. Yeah, I mean, it's you can see, once you if you use those dark pencils, it can really make your life so much easier. Other thing, too, I, I just... As things occur to me, I'm noticing, let's say, my pencil's getting a little bit dull. I can obviously sharpen my pencil, but often when I'm drawing, I'm twisting the pencil in my my hands to keep finding the sharp edge, because it's going to kind of, it's sort of like sanding one side, and you've got to turn a little bit. And if you keep doing that, you'll actually find you have to sharpen the pencil far less frequently, because you're kind of sharpening it as you're drawing. Um, okay. I'm going to try to speed up here, which means, unfortunately, if I'm trying to do this hair and I'm trying to speed it up, I'm going to have to, you know, cut a few corners and things might look a little bit more, excuse me, more stylized than they actually are. And that's just... You know, the, the slower that, you, you, and the, that you're doing any drawing, the more accurate it's going to be. The faster you go, the more sloppy, the less accurate, and the more your own imagination is going to start filling in the blanks. Which can actually be really cool because then it starts to look more like, you know, uh, your drawing and less like somebody else's drawing. Um, but it can also mean you, you might sacrifice a little bit of the the likeness of your picture, and it might start looking a little bit more generic, possibly. And so when you're done your drawing, if it doesn't look like you at all, but it still looks like a person, that's okay. It's not a, a all or nothing game here. If you come up with a drawing and it looks like some other person that looks kind of like you, then that's actually a pretty big achievement, especially if you've never done anything like this before. Okay. So I'm going to quickly add some hair in here. And I've got a little bit of gray in the side of my hair. So if I'm drawing in, in um, black and white, well, I may not fill this in and make it like this big dark block of hair because then it's going to look like my hair is not only much darker, but it's going to make me look younger and younger. So just being mindful of that here. Okay. Um, oh, so Yannick sent some drawings. So we'll talk about those at the very end of class. Cool. So hopefully, 
Oh, and Heidi's um, posted the portrait she did of herself, and you're already done. Great job. Oh, wow, that's super exciting. You're moving so quickly. Um, I am a little worried. Of <laughs> Once I start getting into the hour and a half area here of the class, I start worrying about the battery life on some of these cameras. So we'll see where we go. Same thing, you know, if I'm drawing a mustache, just like I did with the, top, the hair on the top of my head, I'm trying to follow these hairs and how they wrap around and create this mustache that I'm wearing. Where do they start growing from? That attention to detail is really important. Okay, so at this point, now I could start shading this, this picture. Um, I think I'm just going to grab a different pencil. Oops, I guess I, need, I could use a pencil sharpener. Let's just use a different blue. You know, if I am using colored pencils, rather than just using one, like even if I'm just doing a drawing all in blue, I will use like three or four or five different blues in there just to give it a little bit more variety in the drawing. Um, so it's not just, if you're gonna use color, then use color, right? Okay, um, really quick things. How, how can I take this drawing and let's say I wanna finish it in five minutes. What can I do to, to bring it to some level of resolution? A few things that I can do is I can add a little bit of darkness into the hair to so that it kind of create a little bit of depth in the hair. Same thing with my mustache. I can do this with my top lip is what I would do. Might do a little shading under here and on my neck. Underneath my eyebrows and my eyes here is what I would do. A little bit on the ears and I think that would be enough, right? So just, I'm just thinking like what can I do to to bring the drawing to a resolution really quickly. I always think about like time management when you're working on an artwork and like allocating time towards things. Cause otherwise you could spend, you could easily spend two hours just drawing your hair, right? And I always try to kind of, you know, keep the whole drawing developing simultaneously. So it's like a Polaroid picture, you know, a Polaroid picture, one part doesn't develop and then the, another part develops completely, and then everything is sort of appearing at the same time. So I want to be able to have the drawing look relatively finished at no matter... So if I, let's say I had to walk away right now, well, I wouldn't be too upset with where I am. I might not, I might feel like, ah, oh, I could have done a few more things, but I, it would be a very different situation than if I had one beautifully done eye and then the rest was totally undeveloped. Okay, so... Let's just, uh, I'm going to go in and start kind of darkening a few places in my hair. And again, I'm looking in the mirror trying to see if I can, sp you know, spot some of these places that would, would work best for this. Okay. So let's say, I don't know, I should put a timer on my phone here. This is what I tell everybody to do timers all the time. So let's say I'm going to put five minutes firm here. I'm going to finish this up. Okay. So you can see I'm, look how just that little bit, I was maybe 20 seconds in the hair, has changed that hair quite dramatically, right? It just starts giving it so much more depth. Okay. And 
Well, let me see. Um, often, you know, when it comes to hair, you know, if, let's say I've got this little bit of gray here, and there, there might be more gray on the sides, but that, as that hair builds up, when we're looking on the side, it's going to get kind of darker. So I'm just going to darken this outer edge here. Same thing. You can also use the side of your pencil for some of this here. Say to darken my eyebrows. Got four minutes left. So I have the light is going to hit the top of this eyelid a little bit, but most of this is pretty dark under here. And I guess I am also looking a little bit down um, at some look up a little bit may even be helpful to take a second to look up here okay one of the if I'm doing um, a, a drawing like this you want to try to avoid your head going up and down as much as possible so that I can just sort of look down and then look right back into the mirror without having to do too many adjustments So here I might put just a little bit of shading underneath this eye. I'm going to come down here and get to this nose. Soften this shape up. It's quite dark under my nose. Okay. Usually your top lip is quite dark because it's uh, there's the light is hitting the top of it and the top the bottom lip is a little bit lighter. Underneath here is darker. Oh, I guess you can't see. I'm holding this here. You can't really see my drawing as it develops. Um, how much time have I got? Two minutes. Okay, my ears darken in here. sides of my face just to kind of give it some shape okay um, my nose needs to be a little bit darker and bigger because I got a bigger nose as I've said so I just need to emphasize that with the shading. Um, oh, I've totally forgot. So one thing that's making my eyes look a little odd is I need to put a little some little highlights in here. A little overzealous. My eyeballs are much darker in here. Right, so even just darkening those eyes, just boom! So much life comes back into this drawing. How much time have I got? Ten seconds. Okay, so I could continue here. I, it's so hard. I love drawing, obviously, so I, I just want to sit here and work on this endlessly. But uh, uh, I think I'm just going to call it um, mine anyway. I would encourage you to continue working on your drawing. 
for um, uh, however long you feel is required to finish it. Depending on, on your style as it starts to develop, you can do drawings, self-portraits very quickly. You know, if you start, if you, if you want to just do a line-based drawing, well, I was at that line-based area where I was, if I wanted to stop, I could have stopped half an hour ago, right? Um, versus if I want to try to get it maybe so-called more realistic or photographic, well then, I would need to kind of keep on going and get much more subtle variations. Like this hair is very stylized and it looks maybe even a little bit too clean. So I would kind of have a little more stray hairs all over the place. Um, but I think that um, that would sort of, I mean, I feel, does this look exactly like me? No. Does it look more like me than it looks like my wife or my daughter or anybody else that I know personally? Yeah, for sure. If I, if this was on a wanted poster and I was, and I walked by it, somebody would call the police, right? Does it look good enough that I could put this on my passport and cross over a border and not raise the suspicion of you know, a border guard who says this is a drawing and not a photograph? Of course not, right? So the, there's degrees of so-called realism when it comes to drawing. To get something that looks really hyper-realistic is going to take a lot of time because you're going to have to be really, really, you know, um, careful about nailing the, the, the subtleties, the transitions between light and dark. And that was like our, our third lesson in this whole, you know, those 20 lessons ago, where we really talked about, you know, d doing that value uh, scale and trying to, you know, it's like the paint swatches at Home Depot, right? So you're really trying to do that carefully to go from light to dark. And that's really the secret to being able to do it. You know, proportions here, just if I was to evaluate and critique my own drawing, I'm going to critique and give some feedback on other people's drawings here in a, in a short uh, couple minutes. But, you know, if I'm looking at my own drawing, what are, um, what are problems about, with this drawing that I could improve on next time? Because within every drawing we do is the, you know, the, the solutions to the next drawing are available. So if I you know, I'm pretty happy with this drawing, but if I wanted to, to change it and improve on a few things, what, what could I do? Well, you know, technically, I've drawn my eyes a little bit small, and maybe they're a little bit further away than they actually are, right? So a, a couple things I could do is I could keep my eyes the same size and just move them a little bit closer for my next drawing. Or I could keep my drawings in the same place and make them bigger, right? So that would be, those are just, you know, so that's the thing with the, the size of the eyeballs that I drew. Um, and, you know, another thing I look at it right now, my eyes in relationship to my nose are maybe a little bit smaller than my nose. So the things I could do would be to keep my eyes like this, but shrink my nose down a little bit and maybe move it up, maybe move my lips up. I could do that. I could also, I feel like my lips are maybe a little bit small. My lips are a little bit bigger. So I could have, if I think if actually, if I had made my lips a little bit bigger, that would have actually changed this drawing quite dramatically. So I think it's, if I was to say what's wrong with this drawing, I would say my chin needs to be a little bit bigger and my lips need to be a little bit bigger. That would really help this drawing. Um, but I think, yeah, so give, Heidi says giving yourself a stronger chin would, would help, right? Um, so it's, those are the little, ultimately, you know, I remember I had a teacher when I was in art school who said the purpose of, of art school is to eventually internalize the critique method so that you can critique your own artwork without 
me or somebody else having to to look at it and give you feedback. So you want to be able to get to a point where you can look at your own artwork, see the problems with it, and then fix it in the future. All right? So because if I guarantee you if I did this drawing again right now, it would look much better than this drawing. And I could probably do it in half the time. Right? Because I've it's sort of like you know, if you remember doing, I was very bad in math in, in high school, but I, it was one of those things. Like if you had to do a problem, you know, and you're doing, you fill up a whole page full of like all of these calculations, right? And then if I, if I said, okay, well, let's, let's just turn the page and let's try answering that question. Well, then it might, instead of filling up that whole page, it just fills up this little corner here because now I figured out all to do right it sounds obvious but a lot of people stop here and they're like "Ugh, didn't work i guess i'm no good well this is this is where all the hard work happened right now if we were to do it again it would get better right it's there's we're, again i have to just stress we're so used to seeing artwork in museums and art galleries that is the stuff that artists want you to see right? We don't see the struggle and the, the dozens of other paintings that are been cut up and thrown out and burned, right? Or painted over. We see the stuff the artists want you to see. So when you go into a museum and you see these Picassos and Emily Carr paintings and uh, Alex Katz, you know, all these like great artists, we see the stuff they wanted us to see. Right, so we're not, we're not seeing, like, because right now you're looking in your sketchbook, is it a drawing you want people to see or not? I, was, I often say most of the time when I teach these classes, people feel conflicted. They're looking at it and feeling like, oh, I kind of like parts of it, but parts of it I don't like. That's totally normal. And I would say, you know, if... You know, Picasso was walking around to the Museum of Modern Art. He might feel pretty conflicted about some of the paintings that people think are great paintings on the wall and be like, oh, I always wanted to change that blue, you know, put some red in there. Ah, oh, it drives me crazy every time I see it. Like, eventually you just have to let go and you have to move on and start something new. So would I take this drawing and start erasing and doing new things to it? No way. I would move on and do a new drawing, taking what I've learned in this drawing and make another drawing, right? Because it's, there's no, if I start erasing in here like mad and trying to rearrange and, you know, change my chin, the whole drawing is I'm just going to start getting all these weird smudges all over it. You're going to see the original line with the chin. And so, you know, this drawing took me, let's say, an hour or, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of babbling right like I'm doing right now um, but uh, um, if I was to do this again I would be able to do it much faster and it would be better okay so um, let me see oh look at these generous comments thank you Plash for saying you're my favorite artist that's so sweet of you um, you teach better than others other art teachers do not teach this thank you that's so nice of you to say um, Heidi says, uh, um, I posted it on Instagram, the portrait I did it myself, and of course the longer than what it looks like in real life. Oh, of course it's longer than what it looks like. Well, let me see if I can, um, find these pictures. Again, this is my, I, I'm, I've got to convince my wife to, uh, let me buy a new iPad or laptop. Um, uh, she's listening upstairs right now. Um, will not be <laughs> happy. Um, but do I, even, I don't even know if I have Instagram on this old thing. Okay. I think we ran into this problem last class. Okay. Uh, give me one second to load this up. Okay. Um, well, look at how this thing just slowly. <sighs> okay. Um, where? I can't remember. Okay. 
photos. Oh, come on. Hmm. Hmm. How can I... Sh yeah, so this is... I have to download the app, log into the app. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I should have asked her to... Okay. Uh, you know what? Um, rather than you watch me trying to download an app and sign into an app and find your drawings, I think what would be best would be for me to just say that we will, um, or maybe is it if people have tagged me, can I find that? Oh, these are a bunch of great photos that my wife took. Um, but I think most of the drawings that people sent me were sent through uh, people's, like a private message rather than, that is so frustrating. Um, okay, so I think what we're what I'll do is at the very beginning of of Thursday's class, I'm gonna I'll have all of everybody's artwork um, loaded up, and we'll talk about your self portrait. So if you've done a self portrait, I would love to I'd love to check it out, and I'd love to talk about it and give you feedback on it at the beginning of next class. Um, if there's any other drawings that you've done that you'd like some feedback on, please send those either through Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Make sure you're tagging me and, and, um, and we'll pull those up at the beginning of next class. Uh, is there anything else that I feel, I feel a little bit out of breath? I thought I should have, I haven't, didn't take my regular tea breaks. Okay, well, if you did, if you're still watching and you did your drawing, you should really give yourself a big round of applause or pat on the back or um, a glass of wine or whatever you need to celebrate because this is a huge achievement. We have been working on different aspects of the face for the past two weeks, three weeks, and kind of doing some very focused, hyper-detailed work, and then we put it all together into a drawing today. And I suspect there were a number of people who were following along to the classes that were like, <clears throat> Tuesday, I am busy. <clears throat> I'm not going to attend today's class uh, because uh, I'm, a f I'm a little scared of doing this. I'm scared of looking in the mirror for this long and looking at all my wrinkles and blemishes and all these things that I cover up all the time, and now you're asking me to focus on them and draw them, like that's painful. So I, tr I know that that can be a little bit difficult. Um, uh, we often don't spend this much time staring at anything, let alone our own faces. So um, I, I, having said that, I do think, you know, the human face is such a beautiful, uh, part of of nature, really, and it would be a sh real shame for you to feel that way about your own face. Um, and uh, I think doing your drawing your self portrait is is a way of like uh, honoring yourself and learning to love yourself, which I think you should do. You owe it to yourself. I think we're you know, everyone's slightly flawed, but we're ultimately all very beautiful people, worthy of being documented, worthy, worthy of being loved and appreciated. And uh, you can't ask somebody to love you if you don't love yourself, right? And it's learning to kind of appreciate your strength as well as your weaknesses is really important. So learning to kind of look at those parts of your face that you may feel um, are not your strongest uh, aspects, I think takes a tremendous amount of courage. And so, you know, I just want to acknowledge that, that you guys have done that hard, difficult work. Having said all of that, in a couple of classes, I think on Thursday's class, we're drawing the profile, if I recall. So we're going to draw the face from this side. And then from, and then on the, 
What's that? Uh, I don't know if it's going to show up very well on camera. I think we'll just do it at the beginning of next class. Okay. Thanks, love. My wife is always trying to come up and help me with solutions. Um, but I just think if I tried to show people's fantastic drawings on a little phone, I think it would just... It, it would, it wouldn't, I want your drawing to be as big as possible and to be a nice resolution rather than, anyway. Um, so we're going to draw on Thursday, I'm going to show you how to draw faces from the side, which is actually relatively straightforward, but it's, it's understanding just like drawing a face from the front, the basic structure that makes it so much easier. Uh, and then I think next, this time next week, we're going to learn to draw faces from the three-quarter angle. So that's when you kind of have two eyes, right? Whether, because, you know, very rarely are people looking directly at the camera when you're drawing them, right? Often, even if you're drawing somebody's portrait, you know, they're looking a little bit off. Otherwise, it's kind of intense looking somebody directly, an artist straight in the eyes. Um, so, and then next Thursday, I'm going to show you how to draw caricatures. So we're going to learn how to draw faces where we wildly distort facial features, make the nose three times bigger than normal, make the eyes much smaller, stretch the ears and the hair. And then, and that can be a way, you know, if you do feel self-conscious about parts of your body, you want to do a self-portrait, you know, you can start playing with your face and de-emphasizing things or emphasizing things you are really happy with. And you can use that to create, oh, look at all these cameras going out. So this one's going to go out in very soon here. So I'll just wrap up. So, and that's going to lead us into two weeks from now, we're going to be doing a whole character design and we're going to learn how to come up with our own characters. So whether you want to create a comic book, a children's book, a kind of story, your own logo for your company or just for kicks, really. So we're going to show you how, this is basically what I'm, going to be teaching my students at Emily Carr at the university I teach at in the fall. Um, I'm going to be doing very s similar kind of exercises that I'm going to be teaching you because whether you know it or not, if you've been following along, you're no longer a, you know, a beginner artist. You're advancing quite quickly. Whether you feel that way or not, you are way better than the person sitting next to you on the bus. If you were pull out your sketchbook and show them the drawing you did today, it would blow their mind. They would ask you what year of art school you're in. And so lastly, just to, to close, if, you're, if you felt this class or any of the other classes I've done have been helpful, I would be very appreciative of any small donations you want to give. There's links to PayPal below. Um, if you want to send $1, $5, $50, $100, there's been five people who have sent $100 in. Um, and that is super appreciated because that's helps kind of get all of this equipment that I have to make these shows. And um, so anyway, if you want to contribute, if you don't, I understand well, times are tough and you have to be lean. But if you have extra money to share, um, I would appreciate any small uh, donations. Okay, everybody. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we will see you on Thursday. Until then, have yourself a, a great next couple of days. Maybe try drawing yourself portrait once more. Who knows? Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.